Good morning, everyone. I'm going to invite you to stand, and we are going to sing the chorus of We're Marching to Zion While the Pastor's Marching. We're marching to, to Zion. Zion. Beautiful, beautiful Zion. We're marching upward to Zion, the beautiful city of God. We're marching to Zion, beautiful, beautiful Zion. Shall we worship the Lord? Hallelujah. Shall we lift up the name of Jesus? Hallelujah. Do you want to just worship the Lord in the sanctuary? Hallelujah. Do you want to lift up his holy name in this place? Has he been a good God to you? Has he been your King of Kings and your Lord of Lords? Do you want to worship the Lord? Hallelujah. 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 Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. We're going to go into our worship. Hallelujah. And let us not hold anything back this morning. Let us give God everything that is on the inside. So guess what? If it's a weight that you are carrying, you're going to throw it on the ground at this point because you're going to invite the presence of the Lord to deal with such a weight. If it's the problems that you probably left at home, we're going to put them before God this morning because he must be exalted. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. So I'm just going to invite you to bow down and worship him this morning. Hallelujah. Even if you don't physically bow down. Just change the posture of your mind this morning. Hallelujah. 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 You are worthy, Lord. Hallelujah. Bow down and worship Him. Bow down and worship Him. Worship Him. Oh, worship Him. Bow down and worship Him. Jesus, 
Jesus, the King of Kings. Jesus, the King of Kings. Worship Him. Worship Him.
there anybody who wants to shout
grave, another day. Take a grave, another day. Take a grave, another day. Hold fast and never let go. No matter what the people of the world may say, hold fast and never let go. this building and give the Lord a praise. Come on, lift your hands, everybody everywhere. Lift your hands, lift your hands, lift them high and just give your God a praise. Woo! Come on, open your mouth and say hallelujah. Open your mouth and say something. God has been good. God has been good. Praise God. Remain standing. Remain standing, everybody everywhere as we invite Reverend Leroy Powell from Dobson to come and pray the omen prayer for us. Praise God, Pastor Paul. Bow your heads with me, everybody. God, you're awesome. You're great. You're mighty. You're matchless. We thank you. We appreciate you. We give you thanks, oh God, for this privilege to come once more in our island convention another Sunday morning how great the world thank you Lord for this opportunity as we are reminded that we should move forward God as we come today I pray God for your richness your blessings to be added to this service help us God to feel your presence in a very special way I pray God that every single person that enter this building and around this building will be touched by your mighty power. God, that there be a flurry, oh God, of your blessings upon us. Let your Holy Spirit lead for us today, God. God, let self be removed and your holy presence be felt through the leading of your Holy Spirit. Every aspect of this service, Lord, we pray you'll bless. Bless the communion service. And as we participate, God, help us to be reminded that your blood was shed for us. As we go further into the day's worship, I pray, God, that every aspect of the service be committed and dedicated to you as you bless us. Out of all of this, Lord, we pray you'll get the glory, the honor, and the praise. Remember the day's speaker. God, such a one, need your anointing another time. Move, oh God, in a supernatural way. I pray, Lord, that us as all believers will seek to worship you as never before. As if it is the last day we are going to worship you. Help us, God, that we'll turn up worship today. And I pray, Lord, that our hearts will be rejoicing in this convention. You have blessed us in the days that have passed already. Today is the final day. And God, we know you're going to bless us in a very special way. Come down among us, Lord. Fill this place with your glory. As we lift your name on high, we give you the praise, we give you the glory, and we give you the honor in Jesus' holy name. Amen. Please remain standing. Please remain standing with us for a few more minutes as we invite Reverend Sharon Kisun to come with our morning devotion. And right after she's through with the devotion, then you can be seated. Thank you. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. You can be seated in the very presence of the Lord. Isn't it good to be in the house of the Lord another year? Amen. God has been good to us. Amen. Since we left last year, April, so many of our loved ones have been passed and gone. But God chose to trust us with life and we choose to be in his house another Sunday morning. Can somebody praise him? Can somebody adore him? Amen. Just touch your neighbor and say, hello neighbor. God is real, no matter how you feel. Come on, tell the person on the other side, hello neighbor. Probably you don't get a chance to talk to them again for the rest of the convention. So talk to them now. Hello neighbor. God is real, no matter how you feel. Praise God. We are under the theme, this convention, moving forward. Amen. And it's forward ever, backward never, we are 
going through. We continue our devotion as we turn our Bibles to the book of Philippians chapter 3. Amen. Philippians is in the Old Testament, more to the back of our Bibles for those who are not familiar with this great book. Amen. Philippians, New Testament, sorry. Thank you. Thank you, Pastor. In the New Testament, and it comes right be behind Ephesians, and it's right before Colossians. And when you find it, let us stand to the reading of God's holy word. Tell your neighbor, I'm not sharing my Bible. You should have taken your Bible to church. Oh, yes. But the good thing, it's on the screen so you don't miss it. Ah, bless the name of the Lord. Bless the name of the Lord. What a book that God has given to the church. The book of Philippians chapter 3, and we'll be reading verses 7 through 14. But what things were gained to me, those counted lost for Christ. Yea, doubtless, and I count all things but lost for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ, Jesus my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things, and do count them but dung that I may win Christ. Nine, and be found in him, not having mine own righteousness, which is of the law, but that which is through the faith of Christ, the righteousness which is of God by faith. Verse 10, that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his suffering being made conformable unto his death. 11, if by any means I might attain unto the resurrection of the dead. Not as though I have already attained, either were already perfect, but I follow after, if that I may apprehend, that for which also I am apprehended of Christ Jesus. 13. Brethren, I count myself to have apprehend, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind, and reaching forth unto those things which are before. I press towards the mark for the price of the eye calling of God in Christ Jesus. Let us as congregation read verse 13 and 14 together. Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehend, but this one thing I do, forgetting the th which are behind and reaching forth unto those things which are before. I press toward the mark for the price of the eye calling of God in Christ Jesus. A portion of God's word, let the church say, thanks be to God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. We'll be singing the hymn, Will Your Anchor Hold in the Storms of Life. We have convention books, amen. The ushers have them, just lift up your hand, indicate that you need one. It's for souvenir, it's to follow the order of service. And when you go home to pray for these leaders as they continue to serve the body of Christ here in Jamaica, and around the world. Will your anchor hold in the storms of life when the clouds unfold their wings of strife? When the strong tide lifts and the cable strain, will your anchor drift or firm remain? Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Mm -hmm. Will your anchor hold in the storm? Bye. 
the Savior's hands, though the tempest rage and the wild winds blow, not an angry wave shall our bark overflow. We have an anchor that keeps the soul. God bless you as you stay firm in the Savior's love. Praise God, you may be seated. Amen. Anybody happy today that you're anchored in Christ? Come on, touch your neighbor and say, neighbor, I am anchored in Christ Jesus. Come on, somebody, clap your hands and praise God. So because we are anchored, we can say no matter what storm clouds, may rock the ship of mine the light of my savior will lead me safely through the night amen let me say welcome to convention 2024 you are looking so lovely down there and we give god thanks for taking us here safe and sound can somebody just clap your hands and praise god for journeying mercies god has been faithful Praise God. Just a few, a few instructions before we get into our communion service. I am going to ask the ushers that once we start serving the communion, that you close off all doors. Praise God. Because we have to have some order. We don't want persons to be in and out while we are serving the communion. So for those who are on the outside, for those who are just reaching, if you're coming in out of your bus, we invite you to come a little bit faster so we can have you seated on the inside. So once we start serving the communion, let me repeat, I'm going to ask the ushers to please do not allow anyone to exit or enter the main chapel. Amen, somebody? 
Now, the only door that you will be allowed to use, the ushers and those who will be serving will be allowed to use, is this door here to the front right, to my left, because persons are seated under the tent that need to be served. So we are going to exit or enter through this door to go and serve those of whom were under the tent. So I repeat again, once we start serving, we ask you, if you're inside, to remain on the inside, and if you're outside, to remain on the outside. Amen, somebody? So we still give you a few more seconds to get to find your way on the inside as we prepare to serve the communion. And today it's good to have in our midst uh, a former bishop, Reverend Dr. Owen Reed. And ladies and gentlemen, I invite him now to come uh, as he will be carrying on the communion service. Put your hands together for Bishop Reed. Ushers, please go to the doors. Behold how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. Let me say thanks to Reverend Powell. I take time out to greet our presiding bishop, all the rest at our visiting bishop, or the rest of our bishops and their wives, ministers and their wives, brothers and sisters in Christ, our musicians. It's indeed a pleasure and a joy that we can be gathered together in Convention 2024. And as we come together to honor the Lord, it's very, very important that we recognize the importance of this holy ordinance we are about to partake in. I also want to thank God for the choirs they are coming in. We are going to be sharing from the Word of God because there are times we do things and we do it not knowing the serious implications. And therefore, I'd ask you kindly to take heed to the word. The Corinthian church was a troubled church with many problems. We say that all churches have problems because they have people in them. The people in this particular church of Corinth were people who, who had no problem putting up with sin among other church members. They had no reservation against treating some people better than others. They had no qualms with holding their food from those who were less fortunate. At the beginning of the church, there was a fellowship dinner called the Love Feast, which was followed by communion. Some came to this agape meal with still, or rather, some call this the agape meal, which still practice in modern churches. Everyone was to bring something to this feast and share what they brought with someone who attended. Much like the modern potluck dinner. Imagine someone withholding their potluck stew from certain members of this congregation. That's what was happening. Paul strongly opposed this behavior. In, this, in his letter, he warned them that they were not honoring the memory of Christ's death for their sins. In fact, he told them that they were sinning at the communion table. He wanted it to stop. And therefore, listen to the passage he wrote the church of Corinth. For I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. 
And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. After the same manner, also he took the cup. And when he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as often as ye drink in remembrance of me. For as often as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, ye also do show the Lord's death until he comes. Paul received the instruction from Christ regarding the supper. Paul was an apostle who accepted Christ after his crucifixion. He was one who used the, to persecute the church. He was saved on a miraculous, in a miraculous manner. Paul went away for three years to be instructed by Christ. One of the things he was instructed in was this supper. So he shared what he had learned with authority to the Corinthian church. They were instructed in the proper way to celebrate the Lord's death. The bread, what does it symbolize? The bread was to represent the body of Christ that died on the cross for our sins. He suffered many abuse on his way to the cross. His body was in rough shape on the cross. He suffered on the cross. He gave his all for us. The cup. The cup represents the blood of Christ that he shed on the cross for our sins. The Bible says that without the shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness of sin. According to Hebrews chapter 9, 22, Christ had to shed his blood for us. The animal sacrifices in the Old Testament looked forward to the time when Christ would shed his blood for the sins of the world. His blood was enough for all those who accepted him as their personal Lord and Savior. Paul tells us that celebrating in the, with these elements reminded the, the people of the church of Christ's sacrifice. We so often and so easily forget. We often complain about small sacrifices. We must make, we must make, ignoring the incredible sacrifice of Jesus' body and blood. And so we are entreated to be, to adapt the right attitude as we partake of this holy ordinance. According to the text, wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily, shall be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. But let us, and let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of this bread and drink of this cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily, eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. And so at this time, it's a time that we should examine ourselves. So, may I ask that we bow our heads reverently before the Lord as we examine ourselves. If there be any sin within our lives, any spirit of unforgiveness, any spirit of hatred, malice, our sinful desire, whatever it is that we may encounter, let us pause long enough to ask God's pardon and forgiveness that when we take up these holy ordinances, we will be doing so to the glory and to the honor of the Most High God. Hallelujah. At this time, I'll invite our service to come.
all our ministers, all our ministers who would avail themselves, please come and stand at the side of the table. We worship your Lord. Somebody worship the Lord. Somebody lift up Jesus. Somebody honor him. You see, we have become so accustomed that somebody say praise the Lord and we praise of the Lord. Somebody say thank you Jesus and we thank you Jesus. Somebody said worship the Lord and we say hallelujah and we stop. Can I say we need to move beyond that brothers and sisters and when we hear let us worship the Lord we just open our hearts and our spirit and just allow worship to flow out of our innermost being. Can I ask the church even now let us all stand together everybody everywhere we are here for one purpose and that is to lift up Jesus Christ hallelujah to the lamb can i hear god's people worship the lord oh blessed be the sovereign lord we magnify thee we extol thy name there is none like an unto thee blessing and honor glory and power beyond to the ancient of days we bless thee O god for your goodness your grace and for your favor we praise thee because thou art indeed worthy to receive praise to receive honor hallelujah to the lamb Glory, 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 hallelujah. Blessed be the sovereign Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to the most high God. Ah, Lord. Glory. Yes. Give him praise, give him worship, give him adoration. Extol him because he is Lord. There is none like unto him. None as loving, kind, compassionate and forgiving. Oh, he is the creator of the heavens, the earth, the sea and all that there is in. Ah, we give him glory because it is due to him. Hallelujah. Glory. At this time, we all will unite our hearts together in prayer. As we humble our spirit, as we humble ourselves. You see, communion is not something you just rush through. It's a, it's a time of deep reflection. Because it symbolizes so much. Somebody said, Jesus paid it all. All to him I owe. Sin has left its crimson stain. But Christ's blood washes it white as snow. Hallelujah. Mm. Glory. It is time for us to pray. Everybody everywhere, those within and those under the gospel tent, those standing on the outside, let us pray. Eternal God and our Heavenly Father, in a special way we thank you for this wonderful privilege that as your children, Lord, we can come together and we come together with the recognition that once we were not a people, once we were considered Gentile dogs, had not the privilege to come boldly to the throne of grace. But through the blood and the sacrifice you made on Calvary and the blood you shed, we who were once not a people, we can now barge right into the throne room crying, Abba, Father, glory to God. We give you praise, O God. We thank you for sending Jesus Christ, your only begotten Son. We thank you, blessed Savior, for your obedience and your humility. 
as you humbly acknowledge your father's will by saying not my will but thy will be done you took upon yourself the sins of humanity and you paid in full the price for our redemption and calvary and so even now, Lord, as the table is spread, the bread symbolizing your broken body, the cup symbolize your shed blood, we ask you to bless and sanctify, oh God, these holy ordinances. In the name of Jesus, we pray you'll breathe upon your servants who will be taken to your people, these holy ordinances. I pray, God Almighty, that as we participate, as we participate, partake thereof if there be any sicknesses within our bodies we'll be healed in the name of Jesus Christ we pray for spiritual healing we pray for physical healing we pray for emotional healing we pray for mental healing we pray for social healing in every capacity in every category we pray that the healing power of God will flow through this congregation we praise you we bless you we honor you and we adore you in the awesome name of Christ our Lord and Savior together we see our Father who art in heaven hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil for thine is the kingdom the power and the glory forever and ever amen congregation please be seated At this time, while the ministers will be coming to you, our praise team will be singing the beautiful hymn, and I'll ask you to join with them. Break thou the bread of life. Blessed be the name of the Lord. I just wish to explain as the ministers will be serving you, Upon receiving, you'll receive this compact entity. By simply lifting the cap here, you'll find the bread. And so, before you open the cup, you'll receive the bread. After you receive the bread, you peel the cap all the way back. And that's your cup for the sun. Amen? So, don't receive the cup and be waiting for the bread. The bread is already on top of your cup. Bless the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, sirs. Praise the Break thou the bread of life. Bread of life, dear Lord, to me, dear Lord, to me, as thou didn't break the laws, as thou didst break the laws beside the sea. Beside the Sacred thing. I seek thee, Lord. I seek thee, Lord. My spirit pants for thee. My spirit pants for thee. Oh, living world. Bless thou the truth, dear Lord.
Worship the Lord. Hallelujah. Blessed be the sovereign Lord, sovereign and mighty art thou. There is none like unto thee, none as glorious, none as kind, compassionate, and forgiving. We bless thee, O Lord. Hallelujah. May I ask, has everyone been served? If there is someone who is not yet served, would you kindly raise your hand right where you are? As long as you're on the inside, and I believe there are servers on the outside as well, blessed be the name of the Lord. I'll ask you to simple lift the first covering. Now I'll ask everyone hold your these the emblems that you are given in your hand like this just hold them up before you hallelujah take a good look at both of these emblems they are quite significant the bread symbolizes the broken body and Isaiah said he was wounded for our transgression, bruised for our iniquity. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And with his stripes, with his stripes, with his stripes, we are healed. And the same night in which he was betrayed, he took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it, and he gave to his disciples, as you have received. And he said to them, as I now say to you, eat ye all of it. In the meanwhile, you may lift the second cover. You will find on your cup there is a, a lip. You will turn the lip away from your mouth when it's time to sip. Look into your cup. And I may ask, what do you see? And somebody would say, Bishop Reed, I see great juice. Christ had a cup. But inside his cup was some, it was worse than the hemlock cup, which was a cup of poison that was used in early days to kill prisoners. In Christ's cup was the wrath of God for the sins of humanity. And that's why Jesus said, Father, if it be possible, let this cup, 
pass from me. But oh, beloved brothers and sisters, when he looked in our future, it was dark. When he looked in our future, there was no hope. When he looked in our future, he saw hell's flame in fire. And he humbly went back, knelt with blood dripping from his cheek. And he said, Father, not my will, but thy will be done. The same night in which Christ was betrayed, he took the cup and he blessed it. And he said to his disciples, this is my blood in the new covenant. He said, as often as you drink of it, you will do so in memory of my death until I come. And I will not drink it with you until I drink it anew in my father's eternal Ah, what are these days we are going to drink a special cup with our Savior when we sit around the table at the marriage supper of the Lamb? And so Christ, he said to his disciples, as I now say to you, drink ye all of it. Hallelujah. 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 Mm. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Mm. <laughs> Hallelujah. Mm. Hallelujah. Mm. Hallelujah. Mm. Hallelujah. Mm. Hallelujah. Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Lest I forget, get sad me. Forget that God 
forward your cups to the right side of your pew. So just forward your cups to the right side of your pew. The ushers will be there to receive. If you have already done so, would you stand with me as we sing that beautiful song again? Lest I forget Gethsemane Lest I forget towards heaven slip those hands towards heaven whether you be on the inside or under the tent or on the outside slip those hands towards heaven and worship God give him praise give him honor give him glory exalt him he is worthy of all our praises he is worthy of our adoration he is worthy of our worship he is worthy to be lifted high 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 above the heavens because there is none like unto him none as glorious none as marvelous blessed be our sovereign lord hallelujah to the lamb glory hallelujah praise be the lord you may be seated it has been a a pleasure serving you today in this capacity I implore you to set your heart in a measure set your heart in a measure to go forward with God as we continue to enjoy his awesome presence because he's with us Turn around and tell your neighbor with a smile, he's with us. He's with us. Amen. Tell somebody in the opposite side, he is with us. Yes. Glory to God. It's indeed my pleasure handing back to our moderator, Reverend Ken Powell. God bless you, sir. Amen. Can somebody continue to give the Lord praise? Come on, man. Clap your hands and praise him. Touch your neighbor and say, neighbor. Loose up yourself, man. Free up yourself. It's convention, you know. It's the final day of the feast, you know. We reach down to the grave, you know. Amen. And we believe in God today for a great time in the Lord. 
Please, ladies and gentlemen, help me make welcome to make us welcome. Reverend Georgia Brown, our General Secretary Treasurer. And while she's coming, just want to remind you that the, 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 there are some members who are on the outside under the tent. Whenever you hear the name of your church called, you are also required to stand, if you, even if you're under the tent on the outside or you're inside the building, all right? God bless you. Bless the Lord. Praise the Lord. Surely we are privileged and we are blessed to be in convention 2024 as a theme of my Christian life, his grace and mercy. If we should stop to reflect on the past 12 months, it has been his grace and mercy. Not the money we had in our bank account, not the job we had, but his grace and mercy. Today we could stand and we could sing and say, Daddy, thank you for your grace and mercy. Because he has been good. He has been faithful. He has been guiding. He has been directing. And we come this day to rejoice and say, thank you, Lord, for one more year. Bless the Lord. I'm tasked with responsibility to welcome each and every one. And today we have a special, very special person in our midst. Bishop Reverend Lloyd Wilkinson. One of our longest serving bishops. Could we ask him to stand as we give him a wonderful round of applause. Praise God. Praise God. Bless the Lord. We are happy that he is here with us this afternoon. He was not able to be here in the week, but today we thank God. We miss our mother. But we give God thanks. Could we give her a round of applause as well? Reverend Totley Wilkinson. Mentors, father, mother. And there's something about Bishop Wilkinson when you just meet him. You'll see this tall gentleman and he will look at you and, and you'll get frightened. Then he'll turn around and just smile. We give God thanks for you, sir. And we are happy that you're here this afternoon. Bless the Lord. As I call the name of the churches and the pastors, the pastors to the pastor to stand along with the members of his church. We'll begin with Dobson in Manchester, Reverend Leroy E. Powell Dobson. Praise God. Village PCG, Reverend Martin Taylor. Moravia, Pastor Karen Powell. Christiana, Pastor William Henry. And as he stands for Christiana, can we give a round of applause for Reverend Copeland Lodge? He's not able to be here, but we thank God for those stalwarts who have stood the test and have left a legacy for us to follow. Wait a bit, PCG, Reverend Owen Reed. Mendistown, PCG, Reverend Owen Reed. Mispa, Bishop Reverend Leroy Powell. Mandeville, Reverend Hyacinth Bowie. That's your PCG, Pastor William Henry. And special recognition to Pastor Ivis Wilson. Could she stand, please? Pastor Ivis Wilson, we give a big round of applause. Another stalwart in PCG, not pastoring, but still a faithful pastor. God bless you, man. St. Elizabeth, Treasure Beach, Reverend Fitzroy. Brown. And I say Reverend, no, he's no a Reverend. For those who did not know. Reverend Fitzroy Brown. Beacon PCG, Reverend Tommy Lee. Cheapside PCG, Reverend Donald Owens. Junction PCG, Reverend Orit Samuels. Special recognition also to Minister Gina Samson. 
a faithful woman of God. Could we give her a round of applause specially? Tattown PCG, again, Reverend Tasha Carpenter Powell. Brinkley PCG, our senior pastor, Reverend Renee Powell. Could we give a round of applause? I'm not sure if it's her is here, but could we give a hearty, a one of our stalwarts? Not even might not be able to be here, but we give God thanks for Pastor Richard Ebanks, Associate Pastor, Brinkley PCG. Bull Savannah, Pastor Lashan Simpson Powell. Red Bank, Reverend Hilge Ives King. Prospect, Pastor Royal Thomas Jarrett. Could you give her a round of applause? What's the zeal? Reverend Kian Powell. Blunters, Pastor Dennis Bennett. We go over to Clarinda. Paisley, Bishop Reverend Leroy Powell. Port and Cottage, Pastor Herbert Kisu. Effortville, Reverend Sharon Kisu. Penantwood, our all rounder, Reverend Joseph Jackson. We go over to St. Anne, Ebenezer, Reverend Jerry Fowler. David Stone, Senior Pastor, Reverend Simeon McClockin. Associate Pastor, Minister Jocelyn DaCosta. Limon, Pastor Ioni Cole. Special recognition to Minister Pauline A. Devon PCG, Pastor Granville Orrit. Kingston and St. Catherine. Better Temple, the wonderful Reverend Rosalie Thomas. Jubilee Town, Reverend Imran Bennett. Chapel, our senior and one of our very faithful pastor, Reverend Theophilus Thomas. Crossing, Reverend Gloria Stewart. Oak Temple, Bishop, Dr. Reverend Donald Walters and Lady Daphne Walters. Faith Temple, Pastor Andrew Barnett. Let me go back to Manchester. Special recognition to our new pastor on the parish of a new church coming over, Pastor Charmaine Brown. We go to St. Mary. No, I will, uh, for Preston Land PCG, Reverend Dalton Harris. PCG Crescent PCG Preston Hill PCG Patrick Grove PCG Victory PCG Reverend Dalton Harris Gray Street which is called Baileysville PCG Pastor Brian and Minister Dorothy Lemon Yalina PCG, a very faithful, determined lady that even when it say look like no, she says yes. Reverend Paulette Thompson Forrester. I want to give special recognition to Pastor Florence Brown, Hilton Brown. 
Today would be a day we should be here. But because of illness, could we give a round of applause? Pastor Florence Brown. We have Reverend and Mrs. Smith from Canada. We give them a round of applause at this time. We also have Bishop Lorenzo Brooks from the One Church Ministry in Red Bank. Are there any other churches among us this morning? I see a hand. Could you give me the name of your church, please? Could you repeat for me, please? Reverend Demetrius White. Bless the Lord. Trinity Fair Peace is in the U.S. We give a round of applause and remember Reverend Demetrius. Bless the Lord. This afternoon, we are here to worship God. We are here to receive from God. I know the time is hot, but you know, if you have not yet bought the program, it's a good fun. And it's cheap, you know. It's just $700. So for those who have not yet bought the program, hold your hand up, man. So the ushers can't come. To. Nobody hiding, you can't hide in a church, you know. Hold up your hand, man. Ushers look around. There are hands without program. Just, just run quickly, because we don't want any leave of a convention, you know. So if you have not bought a program, be honest in church, but not buy a little program, no, man. We give God thanks this afternoon. Let us continue to worship God as I un hand back to our moderator. Praise the Lord. And let me see your hands if you're not a Christian. You're not saved. Everybody's here. Christian, Mike, oh, there's, a, there's some hands around there. We welcome the unsaved who are here with us today. Come on, put your hands together for them. Come on, man, clap. They're better than that. We... Is, there, is there anyone in church this morning who you have a situation that you need God to help you with? Just raise your hand. Lift your hand and say, me, Pastor. I need God to help me with something. As so much I want, as so much I want to all right. But boy, I tell you, if I had the chance, I, could, I would put up both hands and feet. Come on, somebody. Come on, the church of God. Come with me, Brother Ryan. Come with me. Come on, the church of God. Lift your hand and say, I need God to help me with something. Can I help you out today? Can I tell you something? Touch your neighbor and say, it's going to be all right. my big 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 apology we are blessed with a wonderful man of God a bishop from Trinidad I could not I don't believe I don't I leave up my friend you know he's such a wonderful person Bishop Andre Began Trinidad and Tobago <laughs> Amen. I, I, honestly, I, I, I just thought he was family already, so it wasn't the problem. You're family, sir. You, you're our brother in the Lord. I was saying, touch your neighbor and say, neighbor, it's going to be all right. No, you're not talking to your neighbor like a sure man. Tell your neighbor it's going to be all right. I heard somebody say, I've got a feeling everything is going to be all right. Come on, say I've got a feeling everything is going to be all right. Come on, tell somebody one more time. I said, I've got a feeling yeah, everything. Come on, say it like you know it. Say, ah. Everything is going to be all right. Woo! 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 Come on! I said, I've got a feeling that well, everything is gonna be all right. Church, hey! Hey! Everything is gonna, well, everybody's here. Got a feeling that hey. well, everything is gonna be all right. It's gonna be all right to be all right. Alright, everybody say, I've got a feeling. Hey, 
and everything is gonna be alright. I've got a feeling that everything is gonna be alright. Everybody say, I've got a feeling that everything is gonna be alright. It's gonna be alright, be alright, be alright. One last time, everybody say, I've got a feeling. That everything is gonna be alright. Oh yeah. I've got a feeling that everything is gonna be alright. Say now. I've got a feeling that everything is gonna be alright. It's gonna be alright. Be alright. Be alright. Oh yeah. I've got a feeling that everything is gonna be alright. Say, I got a feeling that everything is gonna be alright. Everybody say, I got a feeling that everything is gonna be alright. It's gonna be alright, be alright, be alright. I've got a feeling, I got a feeling that everything is gonna be alright. I've got the faith, I've got the faith. That everything is gonna be alright. Everybody say, I've got a faith that everything is gonna be alright. It's gonna be alright. Be alright. Be alright. Everybody say, I've got a faith that everything is gonna be alright. Oh, I've got a faith that everything is gonna be alright. I've got the faith. I got a faith that everything is gonna be alright. It's gonna be alright, be alright, be alright. I feel good. Say, I feel good, 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 good. I feel real wonderful, good. But every time I talk about Jesus, I feel good. I feel good, I feel good, I feel real wonderful good, and every time I talk about Jesus, I feel good, 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 I feel good, 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 I feel real wonderful good, and every time I talk about Jesus, I feel good, good, good. Oh, I say you're excellent, Jesus, you're excellent. Oh, you're excellent in all the earth. Oh, oh you're excellent, Jesus, you're excellent. Oh, you're excellent in all the earth. And if the people don't want to praise you, oh, you're excellent in all the earth. And if the people don't want to praise you, oh, you're excellent in all the earth. Oh, excellent, Jesus, excellent, oh, excellent in all the earth. Oh, you excellent, Jesus, oh, excellent, oh, excellent in all the earth. Oh, and if the people don't want to praise you, oh, you excellent in all the earth. Oh, if the people don't want to praise you, oh, you excellent in all the earth. Oh, the earth. Oh, you I wish somebody saw you with the catch of fire. Get your fire, get your fire. I wish somebody saw you. Get your fire, burn them with the holy. I wish somebody saw you. I wish somebody saw you. Get your fire, get your fire. Oh Lord, get your fire. Oh yes, I wish somebody saw you. Get your fire, burn them with the holy. If you understand, oh no, burn them with the holy ghost. Burn them. I somebody so get a fire and get a fire. Yes, I wish somebody so get a fire. Don't the Holy One more time, say, Oh, 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 Say more for your Holy Ghost for your set and give me. Let me praise me Lord. Yes, I'm on fire. Holy Ghost for your set and give me praise. Let me praise me God. And if you see that in any way, Holy Ghost for your will remove your 
give me power to tread upon you. So give me pass, let me praise me God. One more time. Some more fire, Holy Ghost. So give me pass, let me praise the Lord. Church, some more fire, Holy Ghost. Satan, give me pass, let me praise me God. Oh, and if you stop, we know the word. Holy Ghost fire, we remove you. Give me power to shine upon you. So give me pass, let me praise me God. Oh, Lord, I went to the enemy's camp and I took back what he said for me. The last one. Took back, yes, took back what he said for me. Yes, I took back what he said for me. So I went to the enemy's camp and I took back what he said for me. Hope is under my feet. Yeah. Under my feet. Yeah. Satan is under my feet. One more time. I, I went to the enemy's camp and I took back what he said for me. Yes, I. I took back what he said for me. Yes, I. Took back what he stole from me. So I yeah, went to the enemy's camp and I took back what he stole from me. Oh, he's under my feet, under my feet. Satan is under my feet. Mr. Bloody says, I take it back. Hey, I take it back. Come to church, take it back. Come to church, take it back. Come to church, take it back. Take back your joy, take it back. Take back your peace, take it back. Take back your happiness, take it back. Your anointing, take it back. Your power, take it back. Your healing, your authority, take it back. Take back your husband, take it back. Take back your wife, take it back. Take back your children, take it back. Take back your power, take it back. 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 We got a picture. Take it back. We got a picture. Hallelujah. We got a picture. Hallelujah. We got a picture. Hallelujah. We got a picture. Hallelujah! 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 Glory! 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 You may be seated. This will be the name of the Lord. Touch your neighbor and say, neighbor, taking it back. Come in and talking like your ministry. I'm taking it back. In the name of Jesus. Praise God. We're moving on today. Woo. Mm. My God. God. Sometimes, sometimes I wish when we come to church, we never have to watch no time. Touch your name and say, Neymar, I wish we never have to watch no time. Because it was sweet for praise God, you know. Come on, somebody. Come on, church. Hey, 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 hey. Boy. Hallelujah. Preacher is coming. Hey. Yeah. The preacher is coming, man.
Praise God. Thank you. Praise God. Boy, when I think of home, there's a roof over my head. And I've got a good place to sleep. Food on my table and shoes on my feet. You gave me your love, Lord, and a fine family. When I look at how many persons would love to be here today, but they are in the hospital. Some are dead. Some are dying as we speak. Come on, somebody. When I look at the fact that last year, I wasn't feeling like this. I should have died. Could have died. Come on, somebody. But God kept me. When I looked at how I was stuck. Anybody ever feel stuck yet? And God, has, God sent a word to me. And said, Kayan, it is time to move forward. And you are telling me something must keep quiet. Touch your neighbor and say, excuse me a minute. I have one more praise left. Jump up on your feet and give it. Woo. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Wow, 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 wow. Praise God. Praise God. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. You may be seated. We have, we have with us today a greeting. Amen. Our regional supervisor, Reverend Lisa Miller. Amen. At this time, she will be greeting the convention. And right after she's through greeting, Bishop Powell is coming to collect our days. Offering, I, I ask the ushers to prepare themselves. So right after the greeting, we'll have Bishop Powell in Jesus' name. Greetings, Jamaica. Um, Jamaica. Amen. Praise God. I today want to greet our national bishop, Reverend Dr. Donald Walters, our special guest, uh, Bishop Andre Legal, all the members of the National Executive Board, ministers, brothers and sisters. I want to greet you in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. What a time to come and lead in the worship of giving. Amen. What a time. Amen. My thought goes back to when God spoke to Moses and said, Moses, I want you to build a tabernacle, but there's a gold need to be covered some of the furnitures um, of the tabernacle, and uh, you need special cloth and coverings and so on. And Moses went to the people, and the people felt the move of God. 
And the Bible said that they gave and gave and gave until Moses said, it is enough. Amen. For in the day of my power, my people shall be willing. I believe that God has sent us a word today. Amen. Throughout this week, move forward. Amen. And if we understand the moving of God and the moving of the church, amen, a lot of things to be done, a lot of things to be taken care of, amen, and we need your help, your support, amen, your involvement for this to go forward. And today, I want to challenge your hearts, amen. I don't have to, you know, I thought at first, that I would come and say, ask for a hundred, five thousand dollars. I don't think I need to do that when God is moving. For I believe that people will just come and give as God moves them. Amen. Praise God. So I'm going to ask the ushers to come at this time. Hallelujah. <clears throat> Hallelujah. Amen. And I want you to come, brethren. Um, quickly but orderly and I want to wave your offering this morning we're going to give a wave offering to God amen I, I know that sometimes we like to hold our offering and crimp it in our hand that nobody don't see what we're giving but this morning I am, I am going to ask you to hold up your offering and wave it before God as you're coming it's a wave offering this morning amen amen we're going to give a wave offering Hallelujah. And, I, and so I'm going to ask you as you come, come orderly, uh, but, but come and, and, and give your offering to God. Amen. As an act of worship. Amen. We're not just collecting the collection this morning. We are worshiping God with an offering. We are honoring God with our substance. And we want to honor him with our best offering this morning. Amen. When God speaks to you, it is more than when somebody demands something of you. Amen. It is more than when I come and ask you to give $5,000 or $10,000. Because I may ask for, for $5,000 and God may be speaking to you to give ten dollars or twenty. dollars Amen. Amen. Anybody believe God with me? Amen. So when ask God, allow God to speak to you. Open your ears and allow him to speak to you. And see what God will say to you. And be obedient to him this morning. Could we stand everybody everywhere? Hallelujah. 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 God, we, we thank you for your presence here this morning. We thank you for the moving of the Holy Spirit. We thank you for what you have been doing throughout this week. Lord, you have sent your sons and daughters to speak to us, to minister to us in so many different ways. And here we are this morning, God, to worship you with our substance, with our offering. We come to offer ourselves, to offer our praise. But God, we also come to offer you uh, from that which you have given to us. We pray that you will accept our offering this morning and that you will bless your people as they give to you in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. What a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God we serve. The angels bow before him. Heaven and earth adore him. What a mighty God we serve.
Transfer. It's NCB Mandeville, and the account number is five zero two two nine four zero eight three. Uh, could you put that up on the screen for me too, so that those who are um, they, they they may see it, um, and for those who are online also and would want to uh, make their contribution. Uh, by transferring directly to the church's account, it is five. It is NCB Mandeville Pentecostal Church of God, NCB Mandeville five zero two two nine four zero eight three. Amen. Praise God. It's not up. Not yet up there. Not yet up there. Could you make sure that it's there for me? May I repeat it one more time? It's 5022940083. Amen. God bless you, brethren, and thank you so much for your giving this morning. Amen. Understand that God has promised to bless us, to open the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing. Amen. May God bless you richly. Thank you very much, Bishop Powell. Amen. Could you please put your hands together for Bishop Powell? Amen. We, we want to give God thanks today. Um, just want to let you know. The preacher is coming on very soon today. I, I want to give God thanks. There are some changes um, that we have made to the, the convention where we start. We have an extra day now in convention. As a result of that, we have more time to worship today, to praise God and to preach. God good day. Touch your name and say, God is good. And some of you who are just coming into the convention, we have some ministers um, that would have received their credential, amen, on Wednesday. And we give God thanks for them. If they're here, can you stand, please? The ministers who have received their credential. Praise God. If you're here in the congregation, seated in the congregation, praise God. We know we have Pastor... Dwight Brown, who is now Reverend Dwight Brown. Amen. We have Pastor Tasha Carpenter Powell, who is now Reverend Powell. Praise God. Amen. And I, I, we have Brother Lewin at the back there, who is now a licensed minister. 
Put your hands together for him. Praise God. We have Sister Jillian Stewart somewhere around who is now Exalter Jillian Stewart. Come on, put your hands together for her. Praise God. And we have Sister Barbara from the Ebenezer Pentecostal Church who would have received her credential also. Praise God. Put your hands together for them. Praise God. And we also want to give God thanks today and appreciate um, Bishop Brooks. Stand up, Bishop Brooks. Some of you don't know who that is, but that Lorenzo, you know. Praise God. Son of the soil. Amen. And we appreciate him and we thank God. And God has been so good to him. He is now a bishop. He's pastor in a church in St. Elizabeth. The one touch Pentecostal church. I try my try. He chant on Pentecostal. You know, he can't live with. <laughs> he can't live with. He's also a businessman. Amen. Um, praise God. He's the owner of a funeral home there in St. Elizabeth. Now, Brooks, peace and rest. If you want to support his business, go ahead. Not me. <laughs> but please support. We ask you, please. As if, and guess what? The beauty about Bishop Brooks is that his funeral home, whenever you are from Pentecostal Church of God, he deals with you very good. No funeral home can beat Bishop Brooks' price as long as you are a Pentecostal. And guess what? It doesn't matter where in Jamaica you are. And I, I know that he's offering a service now where if you have your dead coming from overseas, him just go to the airport and do the paperwork for you. You can stay home and then we go down a man to go be at Kingston, pick up your dead, take care of your dead for you. Brooks, peace and rest. Praise God. God bless you. If you don't have his number, call me. I'll get it to you. Amen, somebody? Put your hands together for, for the Lord. God is good. We're moving on very quickly. At this time, we're going to be blessed with a song from one of our guests, minister who is here with us. I invite Brother Simon to come at this time as he will be ministering to us in song. Praise God. Amen. Convention. Praise the Lord. I want to greet you, Bishop, Dr. Walters, First Lady, all the ministers, and all of you lovely folks, in the mighty name of Jesus. We, make, we need some makeover. So as I sing this song for the Lord, I hope you will be, receive a blessing. Oh, praise the Lord. Are you unhappy? Just wave your hands. Give the Lord a wave and bless his name this morning. He's worthy. Is his grace why we're here today? His grace and mercy. His grace and mercy. Hallelujah. Your grace and mercy brought me through. I'm living, I'm living this moment because of you. I want to thank you and praise you, praise you too. Thank you, Lord. Are you ready for me now? They can't get it. Let me, let me make a walk down here because maybe you don't understand that right.
Okay, I'm going to leave that alone because it don't seem like you're getting it there. I am redeemed. Still don't get it. You had to start from the beginning. Sorry. <laughs> oh, praise God. Hallelujah. Okay. Let's see if they have it a lot. Let's see if they get it. Praise God. Praise God. You got it. Praise God. Hallelujah. If your feet has crumbled under from the rubbles and the blast, take a look into your future. Step away from your past. He will give you life to meaning. He will rescue, rescue. Have you been to the potter's house and the mercy lifted me the sinful life that I was living? Oh, I know it just wouldn't last. So I enter into the potter's house. I place my vessel. Oh yes, he made me over again. Thank you, Jesus. I know it took some doings, cause I was twisted. I was me. My countenance was anger. I was bitter. But then he placed me on a sprinkler Where my heart began to give On his wing of grace and mercy He made me over, over again Have you been, have you been to the brothers of Lifted me the sinful life that I was living. Oh, I know it just couldn't last my year. So I enter into the potter's house. I place my vessel into his hands. On his wings of grace and mercy. I've been to the brother's house. Oh, thank you, Jesus. I know it took some doing because I was twisted. I was me. My hands was anger. I was bitter.
that you've been to the mother's house and the mercy lifted me the sinful life that I was living. Oh, I know it just could last. So I enter into the mother's house. I place my vessel. Into his hand on his wings of grace and mercy. Have you been to the mother's house? And the person lifted me the sinful life that I was living. Oh, I know it just won't last. So I enter into the father's house. I place my vessel into his hands. On his wings of grace and mercy. Praise the Lord. Praise God. Just a few announcements. It's time for the word. Just before our speaker comes, our bishop comes today to share the word of the Lord. Can I ask you, brothers and sisters, for those of whom who the, the, the seat beside you is holding your back, I'm asking you, please, just to remove your back so someone who is on the outside who wants to come on in can have a seat beside you. Because I know that the person who is going to sit beside you will be much better company than your back. If you don't believe me, try it. Amen. Praise God. And I also want to let you know that we do have a talk shop here, and it is located to my left behind the tent up top. So if you need something to refresh yourself, the talk shop is there, and it is open. Amen, somebody? Praise God. This is the last time for now that you'll be hearing my voice. We'll have our assistant bishop who is coming to introduce our day's speaker, followed by prior by Reverend Jerry Fowler for our guest speaker and right after he is through praying the beautiful choir from the Hope Temple PCG will be ministering to us and then right after that our guest speaker I ask you to stand and make welcome our guest speaker God bless you have a great afternoon amen praise God you know it is it is something um, wonderful to work with people who are willing to work. Amen. Amen. And I say so because our speaker for this afternoon is our national bishop, Bishop Dr. Donald Walters. When you work sometimes and you meet um, leaders from around the world, there are those who make themselves scarce and unreachable, that it's, it's hard to reach them, it's hard to speak to them, you, it, you feel uncomfortable around them. But then, then there are those who care about people and it's good to work with those that kind of, of people. Having served in the capacity myself and having worked with other bishops like Bishop Lloyd Wilkinson, Bishop Owen Reed, I am glad to be serving today as the assistant bishop to Bishop Walters, a man who really loves the Lord and loves the work of God and the people of God. 
when he serves, he, he, he does so with all of his heart. Amen. It is not for show, but it's because he loves doing it. Bishop has been involved in, in so many areas of the work of the Pentecostal Church of God. He has made sacrifices. And I can tell you this also, that having worked with him over the years, many years, um, as member of different boards and, and um, of the school board, of the organization, different committees and so on, um, Bishop has made many, many sacrifices. Not, not simply because he's now serving as the leader of this organization, but he's, he gave and he served because of his love for the Lord and his love for the people of God. We're honored to have him as our national bishop, serving and continuing to do what he loves for the Lord. Amen? Praise God. And so today, we'll have him speak, speaking to us the word of God. I'm going to invite um, Reverend Jerry Fowler to come at this time and lead us in prayer as right after the choir, Reverend uh, Bishop Walters will come to us. Let's stand for prayer, everybody. Let's look to the Lord in prayer this, this day for this hour, this time that he has set aside to speak to us through his servant. Let's pray that our hearts will be willing to receive that which God has laid on his heart to give us. It's a word for the season and a word for the rest of this year as we move forward as a church and as an organization. Could we bow our heads, everybody, everywhere? Hallelujah. We thank you, Jesus. Father, the entrance of your word gives light. Your word is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. Today, as your servant delve within your sacred word, we pray for life and light. We know, God, that you have already set aside this day to speak into the hearts of your people. So we ask today, O oh God, that you will speak until we hear you. You will move until we feel you. You will do exceedingly abundantly. Moreover, all we can ask, think, or even imagine. Even now, God, we know that you have sent your servant, God, an assignment to speak a word into this organization. That the life of your people who have gathered to hear. May we not only be hearers of your word today, God, but do us also. Even now, God, we present your servant, Bishop Dr. Donald Walters, by name into your hands. God, you know everything about him. We pray now, God, that your hands will be laid on him, that your anointing will overshadow him from the crown of his head to the very sole of his feet. May he even now, God, feel your power moving through his body, every vein, every artery, every muscle, every tissue, every bone. We ask, God, that you will saturate him under your anointing. So as he speak, God, he will speak as an oracle. He will speak as a conduit through which you will send your word. He will speak, God, he may have prepared a sermon, but I pray, God, you'll give him a ream of word, a word, God, that will address every condition, a word, God, that will cause your people to arise and go forward in your name. We ask, God, that every demons and devil sent an assignment will be trampled on the field. Even now, God, send your angels to encamp about him. Guard him from every attack of the adversary in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Send your power, send your anointing. Let the very atmosphere be conducive to preaching. Shake the very foundation of earth today, God, as your word go forth with power. 
heal, deliver, and set free. Raise him up, God, as he speaks. Thus said, Almighty God. And we give you glory and honor and praise for who you are and for what you're about to do now. In Jesus' name. Everybody lift your hands and say, God, we receive your word. In Jesus' name. Come on, give him glory, honor, and praise right where you are. Come on, come on, come on. The choir will now minister. Bless the Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Glory to the name of Jesus. Glory to the name of Jesus. Glory to the name of Jesus. Awesome God he is. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah. In the new found way, the gospel highway leading to the home eternal. I walk and talk and talk and talk with the master.
Lord, a shout in the house of the Lord. Glory to God, glory to God. Amen. Put your hands together for the Lord. In the new, in the new Jerusalem. Give God some praise in the house of the Lord. God is good. Praise God, you may be seated. What heaven? Can you imagine what heaven is going to be like? Just a small fraction of people gathered together, touching something concerning his name. And the anointing can be so strong. What heaven? I just imagine what heaven. In my infinite. Praise the Lord. What heaven is going to be. When we all get to heaven. What a day. There shall be no night. What a day of rejoicing that will be when we all see Jesus we will sing and shout what a new Jerusalem give the Lord some praise in the house of the Lord today God is a good God he's so good to us it's nice to be in convention 24 62nd convention and I'm happy to be alive. Amen. I want to give God thanks for every one of you today, especially to our executive board, to your Hebrew assistant bishop. Amen. To all the ministers, exhorters, and all the well wishers of the Pentecostal Church of God, Jamaica. I want to say thank you, church, for just coming out together today. I told you that if you don't early, you're going to stay outside. And some of you made it. Touch yourself and say, thank God I made it. <laughs> I made it. I, we, we, we still love those <laughs> at the outside. Unfortunate. Uh, they were not definitely late, but somebody had beat them before. Amen. Praise God. Not unlike the choir who their seat was um, were reserved because they left church, left their home, left the church when church already called. But you made it because your seat reserved. That's what's gonna happen in heaven, you know. You can't let go to heaven because your seat already there. When we used to go to the theater and carry my children to the theater, I pay up. I like to go state to regal, so I pay back seat. I bought it before. So even if we're late, we have a seat. <laughs> we pay more, but we have a seat. This, in heaven, you have your seat. Oh, you're not sure? You have a seat in heaven. Nobody, we're not going to rush to get seat because yes, Jesus says, in my father's mansion, in my house, there are many mansions. And we know that is conflicting because you cannot find... In my father's house, you can't find mansion in a house. But God has a way of doing things that you don't understand. So the word house would mean space. It's spacious. That's what he's saying. I have a lot of spaces for everybody and room, you know, because some people go into hell. And there's a room for everyone. Glad to have my wife. Come here, little. She, um, we grew together. I told everybody I know her from she was 17. And I was, you want to know how old I was, right? That's none of your business. <laughs> I know her from, we, we were young. Um, just believe it or not, we are very close in here, so you can just figure out something. No beard, no mustache, nothing at all. But we grew together as children, but we got married. It's not even 20 yet. It does reach 20. But we got married. And we're still here today. 
So I'm telling young people, I'm showing you something. It can work. If you love each other. Amen. I didn't say it was perfect. We had our quarrels. We have our big times. Amen. And somebody says that the other day, nice when you have a little problem, because when you're making it up, it's nice. <laughs> you got thanks for my beloved wife. Somebody praise God. Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise God. I well, thank God for Reverend Taylor, my good friend, who was the, he, he sent his apology. We know he had some emergencies, but he's here today. Amen. Amen. And others, praise the Lord. Thank God for our moderator and all our secretary treasurer. And I want to thank God for the man, the, the bishop who baptized me. Anybody knows who is it? Yeah. Bishop Wilkinson, my spiritual father. Amen. Amen. Somebody praise the Lord. There's no love lost, Bishop. I respect you. Amen. Praise the Lord very, very much. I, I, I give God thanks for you. I mean, that young man, tall, trapped in. He was much bigger than that. Tall came in and to Parry Road in a little church. And as a little man, short, you know, but he baptized me. And today, you should be feeling good, sir. You should be feeling good. I'm still here. Give God thanks. I'm still here. Praising the Lord. Hallelujah. I was baptized here in the Pentecostal Church of God, and I'm still here after 42 years. The Lord is good. Somebody praise God. Amen. Praise the Lord. Even though the shoes is very hot, and they see too big, but I'm still here. That chair is too big. A bishop will get some chair that. I can't fill up the space. <laughs> I don't try. Two of us can occupy it. My wife and I can sit in here. But God is good. Amen. Amen. It's not the size of the hawks, you know. <laughs> it have, it's the effects of the chops. Praise yes, <laughs> the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. The Lord is good. Thank you very much, Bishop Wilkinson. And as I said, we honor you, respect you. You're not getting older, you're still young. God is good. <laughs> Praise the Lord. And this is Wilkinson, I'm sure she might be watching and so on. But I give God thanks for that. And I also want to remember those who could not come today. A reason I want to also mention Reverend Gloria Stewart. I believe she'll be watching at this time. Um, we, we will still respect them because, as a matter of fact, we are putting a team together to go and visit those who can't come to us. And they will assess them and tell us what is going on so we can know what we can do. We did arrange that. We had a meeting. Yes, they will arrange for them. So we, are, we care about them. They, they don't have to need any food or anything. They just want to know where they are and what they're doing. So um, Reverend Stuart, you're in Craft Hill. We love you with the love of the Lord and respect you. I know if you were, everything was fine, you would be here today. So as Reverend Lodge... Uh, Reverend Rene Powell, uh, Reverend Reverend Brown. Oh yes, Reverend Brown, my good friend in Saint Mary, who is she's not well, and we plan to visit her this week. And so we are coming your way, and many others who are not well today. The Lord bless you. Well, I'm not here to bring greetings, but I have to say, oh, I love you. Amen. I'm here to break the word. And what a wonderful week we had. Every night, every day, we felt the spirit of the Lord. And I believe God is about to do something here today. Somebody is about to be delivered. And the theme said, moving forward. We are moving forward. The Pentecostal Church of God is moving forward. Sometimes we drop anchor and decide not to move because the weather is bad. But today we let go and begin to sail. We're not going sideways. We're not going to go sideways means we're drifting. But we are heading to the direction in where God calls us. We are going to that in that direction. 
the text that we the theme is moving forward but it is taken from Philippians chapter 3 and we, 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 we place much emphasis on verses 13 and 14 and this is what it says does remind you of it Thirteen and fourteen, brethren, I count not myself to have, have apprehended, but this one thing I do: forgetting those things which are behind, and reaching forth unto those things which are before. I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God. In, in Christ Jesus. Let's give God thanks. I want to thank God for Bishop Lee Gala, very anointed man of God. Amen. From Trinidad, he's my good friend also. And we, we already accept him as our best friend in the Lord. Praise God. But you'll hear from him later. You know something, brethren? In moving forward, there are a lot of requirements. And I want us to realize today that you cannot move forward unless you follow the principles of moving forward. There are many principles that you cannot ignore if you want to move forward. Paul said, brethren, so he was talking to the, the, the brethren. And I cannot understand what he was saying here. Because he's saying, I count not myself to have apprehended. What a serious thing to say. That you're not yet got old enough something. But one thing I do. Forgetting those things which are behind. And reaching forward to the things that are before Father, we thank you for your words. Bless it in our hearts. Speak through me to your people. Let your people hear your voice through my voice. Let the spirit of the Lord condescend in our midst today. As you are already here, Lord. But in a very special way. You said in your words, if any man speak, let him speak as an oracle of God. Today, Lord, I am available. Use me as an oracle. For we ask it through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Moving forward. I heard a sad, very sad story from a, from a church. A lady came to church. And one Sunday, and the church was full. And she was late. And somebody took her seat. And when she looked around, she stood over that person and she looked at the person and they shook her head and she walked away and find a seat somewhere. She never sung. She never worshipped. She was so upset that she forget that it, she was there to worship God. And she continues for a long period of time. But one day, God moved into the minister's heart and says, you know, we are going to have a special service. We are going to ask all the people to tell some things about what is hindering them from moving forward. I want everybody to empty themselves of the obstacles of the things that hindering them, that's bothering them, that they can't overcome. And a few persons came up and testified about things that enter them in the flesh. But this elderly lady walked up and said, I want to confess to the church today. 20 years ago, I walked into this church and I was sitting at the second row and somebody took my seat. And for 20 years, I'm upset. 
worship for 20 years because I lost my special seat where I sat for years. She came to church every Sunday, but she did not worship because she lost her seat one Sunday. How many people we have in the church today who still keep in malice? How many people we have today still saying, God understand? We have a church saying to say that, well, we're not really vexed with them, but we're not talk to them. And the Lord said to shun the very appearance of evil. How many people we have in church plead the blood against our brothers and sisters, even your husband or your wife? The blood of Jesus against you. Do we know what we're saying? When you say the blood of Jesus against you, it means you cannot be saved. You're condemned. So we are binding our own people and they can't go forward. Do you know that witchcraft is not something you do, it's something you say? When John was baptizing, he saw the people coming to be baptized. He said to them, who bewitch you? Who bewitch you? They didn't work witchcraft like what we're talking about. They speak something against them. Maybe they said, you can't be saved. You're too wicked to be saved. Let nobody stop you from moving forward. i tell you one more. I like, I, I was a chef, I told that story last night. But there was a chef once upon a time that went into the bar storeroom and took out a chicken and take it home. He stole it. And the head chef saw him and said to him, son, why are you, what are you doing with the chicken? And he said, sir, I, wa I want you to take home too. He said, all right, you know what I'm, what I'm going to say to you now? I won't tell the boss, but you have to listen to me from now on. So the, the young man's supposed to go home four o'clock. And the big chef would come to the young man and say, what are you doing? He said, I'm going home. My time finished. He said, no, you have to work. I am going home. You work for me. He said, but sir, I have a date. He said, listen. Do you want me to tell the boss about the chicken? He said, no, sir. He said, well, work. The next evening, the young man get ready. He came up and he said, young man, what are you doing? He said, I'm going home. My time finish. He said, no. You have to work for me. I have to go home. I'm tired. And he worked. Tears in his eyes. The next evening, the man tell him the same thing. You need to work for me. Because I don't want to tell the boss about your chicken because you know you'd lose the job. So the young man think about it and say, you know something, I have a problem here now. What should I do about it? And he went up and he said, listen, you know, I'm going to settle this thing once and for all. And he told nobody anything. He just walk up to the boss office and said, boss, I have a confession to make. He said, what happened, young man? He said, sir, the other day I went in this room and I stole your chicken, one chicken. He said, you know, son, you should be fired. But because you are honest enough to come to me and confess it, go back and work. Yeah. The young man felt happy and relieved of the stress that, and the agony that the head chef and the next, next evening, the young man put on his clothes and I was about to go home. And the big chef come back to him and said, where are you going? He said, I'm going home. He said, you mean you're going home? You're working for me? He said, I ain't working for you no more. I uh, went to the boss in the upper room and I told him what happened. And he pardoned me. He said, man, my whole account is sacred. Let her go. Hallelujah. Confession is the key. Second, your issue with God. It doesn't matter how people think about you. It's what God says about you. When he sets you free, you are free indeed. Hallelujah. So Paul says, letting it go 
My first point is letting go before you move forward. Let it go. Letting it go before you move forward. Let it go. You cannot continue to live. Leave it, Moses. Come on, somebody. Those things. Hallelujah. Him let them go. Somebody praise the Lord. Somebody praise God. Somebody praise the Lord. He said, I call not myself to have apprehended. But this one thing I do. Forgetting. Somebody praise the Lord. Those things which are behind. Somebody praise the Lord. You have to let them go. You have to let them go. Jesus, what happened to Paul? Paul was pursuing something very special. He said he had not yet holding on to it. What was the situation in? If you see, read verse 11, come down. He would said that he, he spoke about that he may gain that which God hold me for. So what God pursued Paul in Acts, in Acts chapter 9 we see when he was converted he was blinded. Somebody praise the Lord. Somebody praise God. Because he was like a blind bull. He, had, he was threatening the church. The church was called those of the way. And he knew no gospel about those of the way. All he knew about is, come on, praise it, the doctrine that I'm, I, I, I'm, I, what's your name? His tutor taught him. Amen, somebody. He knew that doctrine that this is a true doctrine. So when he heard about those of the way, he thought it was a new doctrine. And I want you to understand that Paul did not hate God, but he had the wrong doctrine. He did not hate God. He loved God. He was zealous. Passionate after the word of God. Come on. After God. But that was a wrong doctrine. Somebody praise the Lord. Somebody praise the Lord. Somebody praise God. Somebody praise the Lord. So when he heard about those of the way. That's why God knew that he wanted the right doctrine. So God blinded his eyes. He couldn't see anymore. And said unless you go. To a special man. Ananias. Amen. Who will give you, restore your sight. So he wanted to see. So he went there. Amen. Amen somebody. Amen. Praise the Lord. Somebody praise God. That's not Ananias. And he says he will give you his sight. And he will restore his sight. But some of the things that Paul said. What will you have me to do? When he said Lord. Who art thou Lord? He said next thing. What is the requirement? I'm ready to do. Hallelujah. So right away he was alert. He was ready to work. So you see he didn't hate God. He wanted to serve God. So he identified the voice with a blind eye. Hello, mean somebody. Somebody praise God. So Paul is a stalwart into the gospel. He blind, his eyes blinded. He will see his sight. Now he's saying, that's what God pursued pursue me for. What did God pursue him for? That he will be at the resurrection. That's all he was pursuing. To be at the resurrection. To be resurrected. Hallelujah. That was a price for all of us. He said it not yet attained. It means the resurrection don't come yet. He said, I don't hold on to it yet. If you had no elder unto it, you would be dead. He said, I'm not yet holding on to it, but I'm going to go. And he says, you have to pursue it to the end. You can't give up. Somebody praise the Lord. Somebody praise God. So Jesus pursued me. Now I am pursuing and following after God to the T that I will gain eternal life. That's the ultimate goal. 
Somebody give the Lord a praise. You know, we have some people in the church. They are like rocking chair. Some Christians are rocking chair. The devil turn you into a rocking chair. And that, what is that? It gives you something to do, but never gets you anywhere. Yeah, some Christians can't rock, you know. And you rock till you sweat, but you never move around the ground where you stand, where you sit. So rock and cheer will allow you to do something. Lift up your hand and say your prayers in the Lord, but deep in your heart you're not going anywhere. You have to be ready and prepare. And it's an everyday exercise in the Lord. Prepare yourself to go into heaven which is eternal. Hallelujah. This is our ultimate goal while we are in church today. Not to make our clothes look good. Not to do, because we are looking handsome and beautiful. Not because we have the best dress. It's because we want to go to heaven and rest from this wicked and perverse world. We're not here just to collect offerings. But it's to enhance the gospel. Somebody praise the Lord. Don't let the devil put you in a rocking chair. And you're very comfortable in the wrong doctrine too, you know. Like somebody calls. What they do is try to pay your bills. We will win you over. And you think you're right because you're depending upon them to pay you all your, your money. To give you money to your food. So you don't have to search, search God. You don't have to look for God. Because they said, this is a rocking chair, Christian. But some Christians, we're going to have it hard. We have to pursue God. Is there sometimes you come to church and you believe God don't hear you? Is anybody ever really come to church and you feel like your prayer not going anywhere? I don't know about you, but sometimes you pray and you feel like God. And says, says some of us, it is said that some of us, because we think God don't hear us, we shout loud that God could hear. But it doesn't make any sense whether you whisper or shout hard. You just have to make your heart and be sincere. Make sure you're spiritual. Come on, man. Enlighten and your spiritual connecting that God can because it's all according to St. John chapter 4, it's only the spirit connects to spirit. For God is a spirit, and they that worship him must worship it in spirit. God is spirit speak expressly to the spirit. Hallelujah! Somebody praise the name of the Lord. Somebody praise God. Let you have to let it go. So Paul is speaking about. An athlete. And sometimes it seems as if he was talking about a boxer. And there's a game that Paul is saying, he's wrestling. You know? Amen. He's wrestling. And if you know that game, when you throw the ball, if you grab the ball and put it down on the ground and try to get the ball out of your hand, that is the type of game Paul is talking about. You have to, you have to fight hard to hold your salvation. You have to fight for your family. You can't just be somebody who say, like a pian pian prayer, gentle Jesus, meek and mild. Look up on a little child or a big man or a big woman. You have to pray some serious prayer that you're wrestling against the wiles of the devil. And when Satan come according to Ephesians 6, you put on the whole armor of God that you're able to stand at the end of the battle. Yeah, man, Satan is defeated. And when you resist him too much, he will flee from you. You put one foot forward and one back forward and cut yourself in the word of God. <coughs> if you want to go forward, you have to let go. You have, to, you, have, you have to let go. Letting go. Somebody praise the Lord. Amen to move forward. You can train with the Lord. I see those Athletes running with tires behind them. Like they're pulling the tires because they're, they're, they're making the muscles stronger. So Christian, if you don't practice, you can't move forward. 
How many of us run when the, when the, when the calls come into our doors? And tell him, tell him to, tell him that I'm not here. You know why? Because we don't know the word. A man came to my house and tell me he don't believe in Easter. He was there in Easter to fix something for me. And he said, me, don't believe in Easter. I say, you believe in Jesus though? He said, yes. So tell me something. He said, so why you don't believe in Easter? He said, because Jesus was not crucified. And he don't believe in Christmas because Jesus was not, was born on the 25th of December. So I said, he was born though. And he said, yes, but I said, which day? So that's why you don't celebrate Jesus' birth? He said, yes, because the wrong day. So I asked you something. You believe in the, in the um, Eros day? Do you believe you have heroes in Jamaica? I say yes. We have yes, of course I believe in heroes. So I say you believe in the in the heroes day in October. I say yes, of course. I say which day all the heroes die? The same day. I say did all the heroes die on the same day? He said, well, not really. What you just have used wisdom. He said, same thing with God. Even if he was not born on the 25th of December, you have to use, come on, wisdom to know that he was born. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He was born. It doesn't matter when he was born. Whether the 25th or the 1st. All I know he was born. And you ask me how I know it. Because he is born in my spirit. I felt the rebirth. I'm a new person. I'm not one of them that easily came to Jesus. I tell God, say, unless you show me the church, I won't get saved. He did. He came down and showed me. The spot of going where this Pope temple was supposed to be. Which was after the crusade, and after that, the crusade start right at the same spot. And I don't I believe that God showed me somewhere. And He showed me the intensified church of God. I said, Which church you intensified church of God? There's no church. I like to make excuses. I said, God, there's no church on earth near intensified church of God. That's why He showed me this a spot through my window and said that. And I look and I saw a spot and a few weeks after I saw a crusade starting at this spot and I said oh this must be it but I still did not want to, to give my life to the Lord I need more clarity but God came back to me vision and said that's all he showed me too and it was interpreting my spirit two years left if I don't give my life to him and I woke up and the whole day, my spirit was just, I was, I was torment. Amen. And I was beginning to be afraid. So I went to the hotel. I was working in the hotel. And I said, give me one beer. Give me another one. Give me another one. Give me another one. And four beers. And the, the beer upset me. That could not quench what God told me. That could not make me feel relieved. Somebody praise God. Somebody praise the Lord. Amen, somebody. But I give God thanks that God said, go and watch your wife tonight. Yes, in the crusade. I said, I'm going to watch my wife because she got saved a couple weeks before me. And I want to watch her. To watch her. She was jumping to laugh after her. <laughs> but I did not come home laughing. I come home crying because I got saved. God tricked me. Somebody praise the Lord. He tricked me to save me. I couldn't do any better but give my life to the Lord. Today I'm giving God thanks. He's, so I believe that come, I come like a pastor Paul. I call all Christian hypocrites. I'm confessing from this point of view because it's a long time story. Amen. I was jealous when my wife to go to church and I stay home and cooking. And one Sunday I put on a pot to fry some chicken and God Almighty, I'm a trained chef. And I the chicken burned me up. <laughs> Every time the chicken fry, poop in my face. And I just threw the pot down and said, you know, from today, no more cooking. We're going to church. <laughs> to God be the glory. To God be the glory I'm here today. So I'm not going to brag and tell you that I walk in like somebody good. I came in because 
God called me for a specific purpose. Somebody praise the Lord. Amen, somebody. Somebody praise the Lord. So you have to let go. Paul said those things. What are those things? Oh, we persecuted the church. That is the foremost. That was the thing that was on his spirit. Every time they talked to him, he would talk about, I am a persecutor of the church. I'm the chief. He was ashamed to know that he was persecuting the same church. And every time he wants to give God praise, those things would come back to him. That's why I told you this story. I persecuted the church. I'm chief among them. But praise be to God. Praise be to God. Hallelujah. He found the right place. Praise the Lord. So he said those things that are, he leave those things behind. Because if you don't leave them behind, you'll never go forward. Somebody prays. Every time you want, that's why as far as somebody do anything, go and confess and make it up. That your mind can be free to worship God. Every time you lift up your hand, you say, do you remember? Can you remember? Can you, can, can you say, somebody who you hurt? I know you're saved when you see them come to church. No matter how you feel. If you don't tell them sorry, you're going to have that feelings that you have done wrong. That's why confession must be done. Pass and let it go before you can move forward. You cannot drag garbage and all of that. Amen. That's why the woman dropped her water bucket. Water pot. And go down. He did not drag the water pot. But leave everything behind you. When you come on somebody praise the Lord. All your prestige and your trophies. Amen. Somebody praise the name of the Lord. You cannot move forward with, with these baggages. Some people. You know, let me tell you something. There is something that I research. And the doctor says, 61% of people that have cancer cause from un unforgiveness. That is science. After they do the studies and check out these people and interview them, they found that they have some unforgiveness in their spirit. Because let me tell you how it works. And forgiveness. Somebody praise the Lord. Somebody praise God. Somebody praise the Lord. Will, will cause stress. So every time you see that person, you remind yourself, Oh God, I, I remember what I did. But when you go, listen, let me say, confession is a healing for your spirit. It erases everything in your memory. It erases all bad things. Out. When you confess, that's why some people cry when they confess. Because when they confess, it releases them from the burden and the stress that running through their bodies. Somebody praise the Lord. That's why sometimes, and it feels so nice and soothing when you, when, when you confess. Somebody praise the Lord. Let me tell you something. It's nice when you confess. You don't want nobody to talk about that person anymore. Because you feel that love, that connection. that You, so you need to let it go. <laughs> Man, it's only stop you from and give you cancer too. Paul said, you have to move away from it. Let it go. Let it go before you can move forward. Don't let nothing drag you. Hey, man, somebody. If you pass somebody, you can say hello. If they don't answer me, that's your business. Go back to your neighbor and say, listen, neighbor, sorry. Sorry to offend you. Because when they hear, when they hear you praying and shouting hallelujah, they say, you're the hypocrite. They don't even talk to me. And them saying, them shouting, they're my hypocrite. And then next thing, they start blaming your church. The Pentecostal church, I got us for all of them still. Hypocrite them. You hear them make big, the most nice on television. Yet them out. You look all that one, what them leading out. And him don't talk to me. We have to be careful. We have to let it go by letting it go. So confess it. 
apologize, say I'm sorry. God wants it too. You can't go to heaven until you, until you tell God, God, I'm sorry. Somebody praise the Lord. Somebody praise God. It will make you sick. Point two. Don't forget to forget. It's what is behind. Don't forget to forget what is behind. Praise the Lord. Somebody praise the Lord. Because some of us, we need to understand what is holding us back because we don't forget. What Paul says, this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth to those things which are before. So you let go to hold on to. You're letting it, come on man, you let go to hold on to something. You can't hold on to something. When you go on, when you hold on to something, to hold to something. You have to let go one to hold the other. Let it go. Somebody praise God. Never you forget to forget what is behind. Always, don't let it pull you back. Don't let it bother you. Forget it. How long are you going to cry because somebody who you can't pay you? How much time are you going to cry every time you see that person? You're going to still cry, you're wicked. It's going to stop you from going forward. You must remember to forget. So don't forget to forget what is behind. Paul says, I forget those things which are behind. So now Paul is saying to us, all when you call me who I was, I am not who I used to be. I'm not who I used to be. Somebody praise the Lord. Somebody praise the Lord. Somebody praise the Lord. I'm not who I used to be. You don't know, but I'm not who I used to be. Let nobody drag you back to what your past. If your past is forgiven, don't bother pick them up. God forgive you. Nobody can put it back on you. God forgive you. You know, matter if people don't like you. And some of you can't preach because you know there's somebody in here don't like you. And if you come here with an unforgiveness spirit, you're going to preach on that person. And if that person is wearing a bra that you're going to say, all them people who are wearing a bra that, you see, hell them ago. You're throwing word because guess what? You, you, you still have that in you and you must confess before you can change your preaching. Somebody praise the Lord. You must you have to change that before you can go forward. You have to ch- come on, man. To, um, I remember God spoke to, to, to Moses when Moses crying to the Lord. Oh, praise God. Moses, according to Exodus chapter 14, Moses was when the children of Israel begin to provoke Moses and tell them, You don't think we could bury in Egypt? Why you carry us out in the wilderness to die? Moses was frustrated and Moses called to God and cry unto the Lord, God rebuke Moses. In a time like this where we need somebody to stand beside me. It was God who rebuked Moses. Why cry as to want to be? Who should I cry to God? He said, your head tough in all Moses. Do you remember that, ser- that, that stick in your hand, you turned serpent in Egypt? you remember it was river Nile, it turned to blood? You have it. The Holy Ghost is not in you, but it's in your hand. You have power in your hand. Somebody praise the Lord. Somebody praise God. The Holy Ghost is not yet given to dwell in us. But there is always, come on, pray, the power of God all around. Moses said, I am with you. Come on, man. Always remember that I am with you when you look up into the sky. What did you see? When the day, when you look up, you see, what you see? You see a thick cloud sheltering you from the sun. At night, you get light to go to the wilderness. With a light in the sky. Moses, you know that I am with you. Speak unto the children of Israel that they go forward. Speak unto the children of Israel that we go forward. God said to tell in this time, we are not going to stabilize ourselves. We are going to go forward despite what the enemy says.
saying, despite what the neighbors saying, despite what the denomination said, we are going forward. Some people we have to carry them. This person, three of them went hiking in the North Pole and they went up and one of them got sick. One of them got sick. And the other one said to the other, to the other one, that's, that's two of them left. And said, let us carry him. He said, me? We have a far distance to go. And if I carry him, we are going to die. So why not save yourself? He said, well, listen, that trouble's come up here. We can't leave him. The man said, well, you stay with him. He's gone. Walked into the snow. And he was going along. This man stopped and he stooped down. And he helped the man. Nurtured him. Rubbed him. Until he got better. So when he reached a certain distance. This man that helped the other man got sick. And the other man got well. He picked him up and began to carry him now. And when they reached a distance. They saw the man who selfishly left them behind. He's sick too and lay down. He said, sorry, we can't help you because we have this man in my hand. This is what happens to us when we are selfish. This is when we don't help others. We too can need help. And we're going to quarrel and say, you're too wicked. But remember, it's what you give. We'll come back to you. Somebody praise the Lord. Somebody praise the Lord. We punish ourselves is what we give will come back to us. If we plant corn, we're going to get corn. Somebody pray, if we plant evil, we get evil. The Bible says, as a man sweat, is that him reap? Somebody praise the Lord. Somebody praise God. Amen. So he is now left behind and he died. He died because there was nobody to help him. Because he was too selfish. To live come on church of God help a fallen brother I've seen people who, who, who will look at who is very poor today they're in a position that they can help us but I lift my hand and say thank God we did not ignore them thank God we did not leave them behind this story is embedded into my spirit and a part of my conviction. Praise the Lord. Amen. But what Paul is saying, don't forget to forget. That's what I'm, I'm saying he said. What is behind? Forgetting those things which are behind. One, there's a need for short memory. You need a short memory to forget what is behind. In other words, don't prolong malice. The Bible says in marriage couple, don't let the sun go down for your heart. In other words, make it up as early as possible. Yes. Don't make night come. Yes. And it's also in two ways. While you're alive. When the sun is shining, because night means darkness, means death. So while the sun is shining, make it up. Because if you're dead, there's no confession in the grave. Somebody praise the Lord. Somebody praise God. Somebody praise the name of the Lord. As Christians, we know people hurt us. But Paul says, you must forget those things which are behind. Paul is saying we must have short memories. Our many memories must not drag out for the entire day. Short memories, forget them. You're not really saved until you can forgive. You can't say you're Christ-like unless we have the forgiving spirit of Christ. Who forgive us when we are sinners. He went on the cross and he think about some of us who criticized him and mocked him and jeered him and speared him. But yet he went to the cross and died nevertheless as a father. Forgive them before he died for they don't know what they're doing. You must have short memory of people who are hurting you. 
God give them every day. How much time must you forgive them? The man says seven times seven. No, Jesus said no. We put a zero to it. Check it out now. Well, oh Lord, it's seven times seventy. Almost that work out. Four hundred and ninety. In one year. No, Lord. No, no. In one day. But Jesus was saying, as often as that person sin against you, forgive them. Nobody ever sinned against you 490 times in one day. What are you doing around that place? People sinning around you for 490. You can't sin so much time for one day with one person. So he's saying, as often as that person. You must have short memory. Oh, my love was still keeping malice. Don't leave your hand up. Today, if you want to move forward, you have to forgive. You have to forget. You can't just say, even though me remember. But, no, just forget. Let me tell you what how I feel forget, forgiveness is. Anytime you see that person, when you forgive that person, you love them more. Best friendship built up this way. People you didn't like become your best friend. When, I, when we were going to school, people we fight with, they are our best friends at the end of the day. If you under want to be, we have to know who you are. And when you start telling me who I am, and we trace and we disagree, then I understand I have to respect you. I can't go past the boundary. So we have become friends and I'm not going to go over the line. We become good friends. God wants us to be fellowshipping one another. Somebody praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I'm, I'm going to try to come down as quickly as possible. But not until God finish with me. Amen. Amen. This is one of the other thing. Under this one here. For, don't forget to forget. But it's behind you. Never, ever, ever, ever. Some, some of the things that we have to get in past. That which you never get over I know you don't get over it but you have to get past it because you're going you're moving forward so you have to get past the things that you never get over you don't have a sickle but you just have to forget it am I making myself understood it never really sets you but you have to come to the realization if I don't make a move nobody is going to make the move so, so, so I have to get past it because if I don't get, I never pass it, but I have to get past it. Amen. In other words, it never really said to me getting past it and leave it behind. Somebody give the Lord a praise. Another thing, you can't go forward looking back. I checked out the athletes. A young man was leading the race. He was, they said, all over winner. He was so far ahead. So he was looking back to see who is next to him, nearest to him. And by looking back, he lost speed going forward. And they passed him and they won. The person won in second place. Passed him near to the winning post. Because he was looking back. If you want to go forward, you can look back. Some of you understand how to climb a coconut tree. I climbed a coconut tree as a little boy. I don't know what he age. Seven, six, seven, eight, I don't know. But it was pretty young and I just want to prove that I'm a big man. I climbed a coconut tree and go hop and go into the, they call it into the house. And when I look down and see how far I am from her, I start tremble. I couldn't come down, I start crying, oh, don't you take me down. You they say you shouldn't look down. You shouldn't look down. Some of us said, we are far away. I mean, and looking back on others. You don't, uh, listen, the easiest thing. I could come down easy on the coconut tree, but I wouldn't be alive today. 
Because when you think you're up there and you're out of reach, you let go and you come down in a flash. It's hard to go up, but it's easy to come down, but you're not going to be alive. You have to run the race with patience. The race that is set before you. Somebody praise the Lord. Take your time. I, I, I look and my, my body was wet. But when I reached down to the chunk. Amen. I just put my hand around the chunk. That's to stop me from falling. And down when I come. Blood in my stomach. Bruise up. Every vein in the coconut tree. In my body. Chip up from everywhere. But I'm glad I reached the bottom. I don't matter the blood. I'm glad I come down safe. When I look and see that I'm alive, I never from that day try to go up in those things where they have no limbs. They, ha- yeah? they don't have no chunk. They don't have no branches. Amen, somebody. Amen. This is what happened to Christians. Praise the Lord. Looking back. So that I look back and that's what happened to me. Never you look back. Don't think I, because when you look back, you begin to show off. Look how far I am and look how far you are. I come, come see you. And when you see some people in church and they, the way they begin to operate, you say, oh God, look how I'm in church. I mean, I have that special anointing like them. I told some people in church once, you know, some load more people came to church, you know. And when them showed, they make me look small. And them said, them strong, you man. They said, what you, oh, you know them strong. Do you know hear the voice? They were the first to leave the church. As I say, smoke signal, they say it's fire. And the, the small voices were still there praising God. Somebody praise the Lord. Don't watch the noise in the market, watch the seal. Market that may appear nice, I chat them, I chat them, now nothing to sell. Nobody not buying anything. When man doing business and I no time to talk, them have to check. Money making up, they can't talk. And you hear people talking and them begging somebody, come by, come by, come by. Haki, banana. Nothing now going on in the market. Pentecostal Church of God, I know the nice we talk about. Amen. So, so don't look back. Praise the Lord. If you can't run, walk. You're still moving. Somebody praise the Lord. Don't run when you can't run. Sometimes I feel like jumping over the pulpit. But I, I'm not going to try it because I know. Sometimes I feel like we're going to kill Papa Lick. I said, David, you're a liar. You think you want to kill me before the pulpit? One night I walk in my room. <laughs> And as a boy, we used to just put your head down and kill up a lick in the bed. And la- a couple of weeks ago, the devil said, do it. He said, yeah, you that. He said, you think me a fool, Bishop Wilkinson. You think me a fool. At my age, I'm going to kill up a lick. Next thing, my head break. My neck break. My back break. They're fragile now. I know who I am. I love, I told my wife, you see, devil, you're a fool. You think me an idiot? I love, really love, literally love. I told my wife, this is why the devil tell me, keep up a leg. You think he can trick me and kill me? Amen, somebody. Somebody give the Lord a praise. Somebody praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Somebody praise God. Finally, brethren, the third point. So the first one was letting go before you move, before moving forward. Don't forget to forget what is behind second. Third is power to move forward. Somebody praise the Lord. Thank God we have power to move forward. But here the power is going to come. God, there are some people in your life that God puts in there to strengthen you. Because some of us, Reverend Kisun, don't pray. But God put some people in your life to make you pray. You notice when we have problems, we pray more. 
And if this is the only way God can allow you to pray, can make you pray, He might allow problems to come in your life so you pray more. If this is the time you find yourself in church to lift up your hands and praise God, God will allow troubles to come that run you to church to lift up and praise Him because God requires worship. So God Himself will allow some people to come in your life to trouble you that God gets the glory. Cannot somebody praise the Lord? If God can make food run out, that you will pray. He's gonna allow food to run out, and every time you pray sincerely, He will bring back food in your house. So some people come in your life to push you up, to move you forward. Somebody praise the Lord. Says that all the troubles are bad troubles. They did not come to, to make you a backslide, but to prove to the devil that Job, come on, come on, man, Job is loyal to God. I don't care what happened, Job will not turn his back against God. While God was laughing, the devil was tempting. But God knows that the outcome, because God is that, you know what he's saying, call himself the ever present. God is not a past tense God. I am that I am. Present tense. If you go back one million years, God is still present. Somebody praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. He's a ever present help. Somebody praise the Lord. God is a ever present help. Means, this means before you get to where the trouble is going to be, God is already there. He's there before you get there. Ever present help in the times of trouble. You don't have to cry out. God is there. But you will, sometimes you need to ask God. God what, what is it I'm not doing? Why you allow me to go through this? But God knows. So some people come in your life. is to spoil you. Some of them like, like something on your shoes. Where you use to make hearts run faster. They call it spur. To spur the hearts. So God will put some human spurs in your life. And anything God wants to do. Paul says that I may what? That I may know him and the power of his resurrection. You want to know God means to serve God loyally. To worship God in spirit and in truth. And at the end, I, I, my aim is to get the prize. Somebody praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Where the prize is. You never get the prize before you finish the race. Nobody gets a trophy before him and say, You're going to run. I mean, no, you're going to win. Here's the prize. You have to run. Amen. You have to run. Somebody praise the Lord. Amen. Somebody. Paul says that. But listen what, what, what Paul is saying here. He said, Listen. Keep your eyes on the prize. Somebody praise the Lord. The prize is a motivator. I used to play dart. And I was a Sheraton Hotel playing dart for Jamaica. I was a captain. And because every hotel would have them dart team. And I was a captain for the dart team. Dart team to a darts. And I would play singles. The Caribbean singles. And I remember at this point in time. I was slated to win that because I passed through everybody and reached the final. And I was there you now saying, everybody saying, I'm sure that I'll bring you home this prize today. Because nobody can beat him again. Because anybody in beat, they beat the best players, them gone. And I'm going to win. I put that thing in my spirit. And I tell myself, we can't let them down. I get nervous now. And my pose was gone. I couldn't keep my feet at the line. My hand nervous and it's sweaty. And I said to myself, I need a break. I walk around, do everything, and I couldn't get my pose again. And eventually I threw a miss, and the other player come and beat me. I wept because I lost it by nervousness. You know what? People push me up too much. Yes. I lost my posture because people depending upon me too much. I, sh I come on, I should keep my eyes 
on the praise and not on the people. Don't everybody push you. Keep your mind on the prize. The prize is a motivator. Somebody praise the Lord. Hebrews 12 verse says, looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. Listen what he says. Oh, for the joy that was set before him. He endured the cross. This is what, what motivated Jesus. The joy that was set before him caused him to endure the cross. That at the end of the day, Walters were going to stand up and praise me. That it was a joy to the Lord. Not on what you're going through, but the outcome. In the final analysis, it's the joy that was set before him. He endured the cross. Because of what? The joy was his motivator. That we're going to praise God. Who sits at the right hand of his father. And the mercy seat making intercession for us. He knows that he was going to receive the glory. And the honor. And all those joy was set before him. He could not lose the joy. The joy that was set before him. Allow him to endure the cross. Somebody give the Lord a praise. Despising the shame. Somebody praise God. Despising the shame. He was naked. He was naked. They strip him. Don't make them fool you. Nothing was not tied around him. They embarrassing him. They spat on him. They beat him with cat and nine. Thorn, they say, you are, you are king, you need a crown. And the blood streaking down his face, he was a bloody man. But the joy that was set before him. He said, somebody put to John. He said to Mary, Mary, look on your son. Hallelujah. Look on what they do to your son. He said to John, See, mother dear, from that day, the disciples take Jesus into their home and take Mary into their home and taking care of her because Jesus says, your mother. Jesus was saying, take care of her. Treat her like a mother. Somebody praise the Lord because my time is done. Somebody praise the Lord. Somebody praise the Lord. My time is finished. My time is about to come to an end. Somebody, somebody needs to take care of somebody. Hallelujah, somebody. Let the joy of the Lord be your strength. The joy of the Lord is my strength. My eyes is around the prize. I can negate everything when my eyes don't fix on those things. Not on material stuff. My eyes fix on Jesus. I know I have to finish the race to get the prize. I know I can't stop running. Somebody praise God. Until I pass, my eyes fix. Sometimes the post look far away. But persevere. Persevere. Keep on running. Heading towards the post. The, come on, keep your eyes on the prize. Fix your eyes on the prize. Negate all what they're saying and keep your eyes on Jesus. Somebody praise the Lord. Somebody praise the Lord. Somebody praise God. Somebody praise the Lord. Somebody praise God. Somebody praise God. Paul said, My praise is the resurrection of Jesus Christ in my life. It's a prize. Every one of us in here today. It's our ultimate prize to be resurrected. Because if the resurrection comes and you lose that. So Paul says, I'm going to run the race. My eyes fixed on the prize. And so when I reach the finish line, that's the end of my life. Because I received the resurrection. I'm gone. Somebody praise the Lord. That's a finish line for every one of you. 
and at the finish line there's no repentance when God said come home when God said go home there's no resurrection if you miss that prize you lost your life no resurrection no resurrection you gotta move forward don't you give up move press 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 and where's our press move move don't you stand here move I know sometimes your body don't want you to do certain things but do what you can do but keep on moving Bishop Legal says keep on keeping on don't you give up you're not there yet you're not there yet don't let pride take you up you will miss it keep your eyes on the prize my prize come on somebody is in Jesus look unto Jesus the author and the finisher he's the one that's going to finish the race for me he finished the race and he set the race for me to run with patience the race that he set before me stand to your feet come on lift your hand somebody and give the Lord a praise give the Lord a praise in the house today Keep your eyes on Jesus. Keep your eyes on Jesus. I'm going to ask Bishop Wilkinson to come and pray. For some people are going to come forward today. You are having a rough time come forward if anybody in here today wants some help in moving forward God knows you don't have to tell us just come forward to thee how great It's a time for consecration. It's a time for commitment. It's a time for renewal. It's a time for revival. Somebody praise him. Somebody worship the Lord. Come on, church of God. Move forward in the name of the Lord. Put the sermon in action. It's time to move forward. So put the words into action in the name of the Lord. Oh, hallelujah. Somebody praise him. Lift up your hands and worship your God. Give him some praise in the courts of the Lord. God is still God. And he wants us all to move forward. Make another step. If you can't run a marathon, make one step forward. In Jesus' name in the right direction and could I tell you that God wants us all to move forward make one more step in Jesus name glory be to God amen 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 somebody anybody else anybody else step forward church of God don't allow these words to fall on dry ground in the name of the Lord you may never hear another sermon like this in Jesus name move forward what joy it will be when we get over yonder and join the throng around the glassy sea we will greet our loved ones and crown Christ forever and this is just somebody said this is what heaven this is what heaven means to me if you miss heaven you miss it all come on church of god it's convention time oh hallelujah what joy it will be when we get over yonder what joy it will be when we get over yonder 
and the joy, the joy around the glassy sea. Well, we will greet the love one time from Christ forever. Oh, and this is just what heaven means to me. Oh, I say what joy it will be when we get over yonder. Oh, and joy the throng around the glassy sea. Church of God, we will be the loved ones and strong forever. Oh, 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 and whatever it means to me. Hallelujah, oh, what joy for me when we get over yonder. And join the throng around the glassy sea. Shout it one more time. I say what joy will be when we get over yonder. Hallelujah. Draw the trunk around the blessed sea. And we will be the loved ones and from Christ forever. Oh, and this is just whatever needs to be. One more time I say, oh, what joy will be when the wind get over yonder. Bless the Lord, oh, and the joy that run around the blessed sea. When we will be your loved ones from Christ forever. Hallelujah. This is just what heaven means. Could I say it one more time? I say, church, what joy it will be when we get to the yonder. Oh, church, and join the throng around them glassy sea. Church of God, we will be and from Christ forever. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, and this is just what heaven is. Somebody, we have your hand and worship him. I say, what joy to be when we be at all. Hallelujah. Oh, we enjoy the time I roll. Like a CC. Church of God, when we will be the love of This is just whatever we Shout it one more time. Oh, church, I say, what joy will be when we get over yonder. Hallelujah. The joy that runs around the glassy sea. Oh, church, when we will be our loved ones and our hearts forever. Oh, and this is just whatever we it's to be, hallelujah, oh church, what joy it will be when we get to hold hallelujah, the joy that runs around the castle sea, when we will be the loved ones and the Christ forever, church of God, and this is just whatever we shall be, one more time, one more time, Shake somebody's hand, shake somebody's hand, shake somebody's hand, and a fellowship, shake somebody's hand, and joy that around the glasses see. Shake somebody's hand, we will be the loved ones and from us forever. Oh, this is just whatever it needs to be. Come on, church. Somebody in the Lord, oh, God, God, the, 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 the
somebody else. Hold a hand with somebody. Everybody in the building and even outside to another tent. Join hand with somebody. This is going to be a united moment. For when we all see Jesus, I say when we all see Jesus, we will sing 
and show the victory. Hallelujah. This victory doesn't come just like that. You have got to keep on going forward. Are you... connected everybody in the building are we connected if you're standing by somebody yes. the church of God hallelujah I say unity is what is needed in the house of the living God. You can shout all you want to shout. You can pray all you want to. Of noon, recognizing your lordship, recognizing, oh God, your omnipotence. We come right now because you are the all powerful God. We give you thanks, Lord, for this day that you have made, you have blessed us with. And as we receive your word, dear Lord, we pray we'll not be forgetful hearers, but we'll keep these words on the table of our hearts we'll go forward and put them into action in Jesus name where we have got division let there be unity where we have got ill feelings may Lord God your spirit take a hold of those situations and bring the church of God together bring the pastors together Bring the deacons together. Bring the ministers together. Bring the leaders together. Let the church be the church. We come against easy man schism. We come against bad feeling. We come against enmity and strife. We come against debate. Satan, we curse you in Jesus' name. Take your hands of this organization take your hands off this movement give us God a mighty breakthrough for until we are united there will be no strength Lord I pray that you'll touch your people thank you Lord for your servant Bishop Walters who have brought forth the words of God we pray for added strength we pray for a new anointing we pray for a new outpouring on his life. We pray for his family. Oh God, lift them up to higher heights. In the name of Jesus, I pray God for all the ministers. I pray for the board members as they make decisions and arrive at conclusions. May they all be ordered by Almighty God. God reverse the curse. Reverse the things that ought not to be in this organization. From the pulpit to the pew. From the pew to the pulpit. Bless the deacon's board. Bless the ladies' ministry. Bless the youth ministry. Bless the discipleship ministry. And all the different organizations and groups, dear Lord. We pray for a mighty exodus of the things that which are not of God but those things which are of God we welcome them blessed Holy Ghost take us back to the former anointing I recognize God many have lost the anointing many have lost the power of the Holy Spirit God we have got noise we have got movement we have got action but in many instances the Spirit of God is not at work 
We pray, my God, for return of Pentecost. For when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. And there came a sound from heaven like a mighty rushing wind. And it filled all the place where they were sitting. Lord, move as you move on the day of Pentecost. And we shall praise you. Heal those who need healing. Bless those who need a blessing. Supply the needs of all your people. We pray for Jamaica, land we love. God, the carnage on the highway. Many people, my God, is being ushered into eternity beforehand because of reckless driving, lack of thoughtfulness of each other. But God of heaven, we pray, lay your hand upon Jamaica. Lay your hand upon every country that we are facilitating with. I pray, my God, for our foreign visitors. Lay your hand upon all of them. And comprehensively, may we move forward in the name of the Lord. God, we thank you for the musicians. Thank you for their skillfulness in playing. Thank you for the pastor's wives. Many of them, they are born and they are bearing the brunt of the ministry. But God, we pray that you'll hide them under your blood. In the name of Jesus, we thank you. Lift your hand and say, thank you, Lord, for your word. Say, thank you, Lord, for your word. Say, thank you, Lord, for your manservant. Thank you, Lord God, for speaking to us today. And we give you thanks in Jesus' name. God bless you. God bless you. What a mighty day. Great day indeed. Thank you, Reverend Walters, Bishop Walters, for the words you have given us today. May the Lord has spoken through you. And thank you for the opportunity of even praying the closing prayer. I ask you to pray for my wife. Some of you must have known that she's not well. But we still believe in God. For he is a miracle worker. He is a miracle working God. Amen. The Lord bless you richly. Praise God. Thank you very much, Bishop Wilkinson. I ask you please not to leave. Uh, we have just a few announcements for you before you go. Let us put our hands together for Bishop Walters. I'm going to invite the ushers to come today as we will be collecting a special offering on behalf of our Bishop, Bishop Walters. Praise God. I ask you today that as you give to bless our Bishop, that you will remember that you cannot outgive God. Whatever you give to him, God is going to multiply it and return it unto you. Amen, somebody? So I ask you now just to take out your best gift, a bishop's gift. And if you give to a bishop, you're going to get a bishop's reward or blessing. And today we ask you, and we appreciate him so much. He has been such a committed, dedicated, and hardworking bishop. And we give God thanks for his sacrifice. We give God thanks for his commitment towards this organization. And as you would have heard, that he has not been committed since, come on ushers, just because he's the bishop. But he was committed long before he became the bishop. And that's a good sign. And we appreciate him. Praise God. Can we have two more ushers, please? Hallelujah. So I ask you today that as you come, you come today and you give your best offering. Praise God. The praise team, just sing the song for me one more time. What joy it will be when we get over yonder as I invite you to come up with your offering. Praise God. What joy it will be when we get over yonder. We'll join the crowd around the crystal sea. We'll meet our loved ones and conquer forever. Oh, this 
Praise the Lord, we give God thanks. Amen. We give God thanks for those of whom who have given. Praise God. We ask that the Lord will continue to bless you. Father, in the name of Jesus. We thank you, God, for this gift that has been given by your people. We accept it now, God, and we ask that you will bless and sanctify it in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Just a few announcements. Just want to let you know that we break, thank you, we break for lunch now. And we will be back here at 3.30 for the college um, presentation. We invite you to come back and be here for 3.30 for the college presentation and right after that we start service at six this evening the final session for the day we start it at six and we encourage you please don't leave we start at six because we want to be out of here by 7 30 so you can be back home early so we ask you please don't leave until the final session of the convention again i say thank you very much for your cooperation and we ask God blessing upon the rest of the convention. And please remember to be here for 3.30. Praise God. Please be. Bishop, come on. Come on, Bishop. You're good at it. You're better at it. Go. Amen. Just to remind and to inform you that next year we'll be celebrating 70 years of ministry in Jamaica. The Pentecostal Church of God will be celebrating 70 years and uh, um, we are looking forward that all our brethren will make an effort to be a part of that celebration. Um, we'll be having a memorial service for the, all our ministers who have served the organization and have gone on to be with the Lord. We'll be having that memorial service. And I'm sure um, those ministers from the different parishes, um, the brethren want to, would want to be there. We'll also be having um, our anniversary dinner and our special anniversary service, and we invite you to be a part of that. We'll also be inviting you to, um, to, bring, um, to give greetings and um, those with business and those who are associated with, with um, business to advertise in the magazine that will be published. Thank you, and God bless you. Thank you, Bishop. Can we stand for dismissal? 
Amen. Could you please stretch your hands towards our bishop? Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you today for your words. We thank you, God, for the way in which you use your manservant to speak to us. Father, right now I ask that you will place a special anointing upon him one more time. And everything that was poured out of him today, you will refill him. I pray that you will enlarge his borders. All the vision that you have placed in him for this organization will come to pass. I declare and decree blessing, long life, and good health over him and his family. I ask you, God, that you will continue to lead and to direct him as he stay humble at the foot of the cross. I declare that no weapon formed against him shall prosper. I declare, God, that the blessing of the Lord will follow him wherever he go. We thank you for using him today. In Jesus' name. As we are about to leave, God, we leave not from your presence. Go with us. As we are about to partake of the meal, the natural meal that has been provided, bless and sanctify to our bodies. In Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. You are dismissed. See you at 3.30. God bless you.